Right, where are we? We are on question seven. And again, we, we're learning a whole lot of new techniques and tips about how to get our data more accurate and get the user to enter things in a particular way. And all this is to reduce what we call the giga or garbage in garbage out effect. Right, number seven is make it compulsory for the user to enter the name of the employee when entering a new record in the table. So in other words, when they're entering that, that particular field, we're saying they must at least enter that field. And we're going to have a look at our access database when we go back into design view. And we look down the bottom here under general. You'll see that by default, um, let's go and have a look at a field over here. And by default, the required option, in other words, must the user enter data for that field, is always set to no. Okay, primary key is a different story, obviously, because you can't leave it blank. But in general, the required option is set to no. So they want us to make sure that the name field has a required value of yes. So there's it, yes. So in other words, we're not going to enter a value now in the required field. I'll try and skip out a value. Let's go and have a look. If I go into data sheet view over here, yeah, do you want to save the table? You might get this happening that may not be valid, takes a long time. Just say no for the meantime. It's just checking. We'll come back and talk about that a little bit later. Okay, let's say I'm putting in a new record over here. So I can use my fancy comp uh, t uh, list box that I created and try and skip that and go into the next field. And so, see what it says? you must enter a new value. In other words, not a new value, but a value for the name field. In other words, I can't skip it out. Whereas other fields at this stage, I can skip out. So if I put in a name, uh, oh, I'm stuck for a name. Okay, Kim, I can skip the gender field. That's not a problem. But if I try and skip the name field, let's go and delete it and try and move out of there. It will give me an error when I actually did come out of that and move to a new record. Right, let's go back. I'm going to go back into design view and let's look at the next question again. A nice easy one. Set a value of 80,000 as the default value for the salary field. Okay, not, a, not a shabby salary that. Um, salary and we go down here for default value 80,000. Right, now remember that this is for new records. Okay, and, then, and we need to understand what we mean by default. Default means unless you put in another value or you change it, it will become 80,000. Okay, and it's only for new records. Now, obviously, default values work on, and are more appropriate for certain fields. In other words, you can't really have a default surname because there are so many different kinds of surnames. But let's say you were teaching at a all-girls school, then the default for the gender could be female, obviously. Um, if the school fees of a, of a school are fixed at a certain level per child, then you could have a default value for the school fees. And so you could, you've got to use your cop there a little bit in terms of deciding whether a default value is appropriate or not. And this, in this case, they obviously tell you straight away, which is really quite simple. Huh? Right, set a validation rule and appropriate validation text for the gender field. Okay, first of all, let's not worry about the validation text. That's easy. Validation rule is simply a rule that Access can see, that you will set, which tells it which values are allowed. And I'll stress that again to tell you which values are allowed. So let's go back here. We know for the gender field, the values that will be allowed are M or F. So our validation rule, very similar to a query, M or F, M or F, sorry. Okay, I'm just going to make it capitals. It actually doesn't, it's not case sensitive. And you'll see it also puts the double quotes around the, the M and, and the F, which is quite common in Access, that it automatically adds quotes where it's needed, which is very handy. Now that's the rule. So that's saying to Access, you may only accept a value of M or F. Now, what happens if the user types in something different? So they Afrikaans, they type in V for Frolic. Okay, we need to give them some type of message warning them that they've made a mistake. And that's what the validation text is about. Now, be polite, don't call them 
damn head or something like that. Um, say sorry, you make sure you don't make any spelling mistakes either. You may only use a value of M or F. In other words, you point out exactly what they've done and how they can fix it. So let's just see how that actually works. So we're saying, right, the validation rule is these are the values that can be used. Let's go back into datasheet view and see how that works. Okay, I'm going to make a mistake with gender deliberately. I'm going to do that V for Frolic thing. Sorry, you may only use a value of M or F. So that's our validation text that's popping up. Okay, so now the person knows I can only use a value of MOF, and you see how it's reducing the number of errors we can make. Okay, because if somebody just saw gender, they might type in male, now the person might type in M, all sorts of things could happen. So I can type in M and accept it. You can see it's not case sensitive, and we can get around that. We'll talk about that a bit later. And obviously, F would be acceptable as well. I'm not getting an error, but let's type in. Uh, let's find a key alongside of F, because that's a common mistake. Eh? When we type the wrong key, so just alongside of F is G, I'll make a mistake typing, and it'll give me an error message there. So that's not too shabby either. Okay, so it's preventing errors from getting in, or incorrect data getting into the database. Note that you can still make a mistake, you can still give give a, a, somebody assign somebody a gender of female when they're male, but it is reducing the number of errors that are creeping into the database and all these things uh, lead to a better database and obviously a better database in terms of the quality of the information means better information and knowledge coming out of that database. Okay, and it's slightly more complicated one year. They want a validation rule and validation text for the salary field. So the person can only have a, a salary of between 50 and 170,000. Always make sure you get your noughts correct as well. Okay, you might need to go and count them. It's easy just to copy and paste if you've got access to the the actual question, but always just go and count your notes. So it's 50,000. Inclusive means it includes that. So it's including 50,000 and it's including 170,000. Right, slightly different validation rule in this case because there aren't just two values like we had with the gender field, like male or if. So we're going to go to salary. And the default value is 80,000, in other words, if we don't enter a value, but the validation rule, because we might enter different values other than the default, it's greater than 50,000. Again, check your notes here. Okay. And at the same time, it must be less than or equal to. Was it 170,000? There we go, 170,000. Please note there are no RAND signs, spaces, anything like that. 170, 1, 2, 3. Right, that says to access. You can enter any value you like, but it must be between 50 and 170,000 inclusive. And again, your validation text is the error message that appears um, if you go and type in an incorrect value. In other words, one that's not in that particular range. Only values from 50,000 to 170,000, 170, 123. Uh, inclusive. Hopefully, the person knows what inclusive means. It means includes both those are allowed. Okay, again, don't make any spelling mistakes, that's just sloppy. Right, let's go and have a look at the datasheet view. You must save the table. Do you want to save the table now? Yes, I'm just going to ignore testing it against the new rules. Right, we haven't got any salaries in at this stage. Oh, there's a default there, by the way. Sorry, we should have looked at that a little bit earlier. You might say, but why has it got RAND signs? Well, obviously it's got RAND signs because we formatted it as currency. Um, We'll look at that a little bit later as well. And the salary, it's going to type in something that's incorrect. So let's just say he's going to earn 10 Rand. Now we know that that's incorrect. Sorry, only values from 50,000 to 170,000. So let's just check if 50,000 is included. 150, 1, 2, 3, it should be fine. That's fine. And 170 should also be fine. 1, 2, 3. Anywhere in between.
between should be fine, so a hundred thousand should be fine. One hundred, one, two, three. That's also fine, but let's go and try something like 10,000 and it should give me an error. Okay, so all these little rules and little techniques and different components in Access are allowing us to reduce the number of errors or the giggle, giggle, giggle effect.